Hey everybody, John Granato, Lance Zerline from the bench. Mornings on ESPN 97.5 and 92.5. Hit subscribe if you haven't yet. You should have, but if you haven't yet, hit subscribe so you can get all of our content here at Sports Map Videos. Uh, Lance, let's talk Rockets basketball. Man, it just doesn't get any better than what's going on right there. I tell you what. Uh, Christian Wood was a really good signing by Rafael Stone, but basically since then, it's not gone so well. Um, and especially, well, we'll see with the James Harden trade, but there are a lot of implications since then. Now, what do you do with these three guys and what's going to happen? P.J. Tucker. They uh, were reportedly holding out to get a young player, and that that is just not happening. It, it looks like they overplayed their hand. Now, are they going to get anything in return for P.J. Tucker? I mean, <clears throat> they might be able to get a second rounder. Um I don't know. Maybe a team would give you a late first since there's so so little value of, you know, first round picks in the NBA at the back end of it. But, um, you know, or maybe it could turn into a buyout situation. I mean, it could do that. Or maybe they could just let them sit there for the rest of the year. I don't think they would do that. I think they'd probably buy them out. Worst case scenario. I would, hate, I would think or at least hope worst case scenario – they get a second rounder and do a stash, you know, a draft and stash player overseas, something like that. But I just, PJ Tucker's played his last game as a rocket. I think the question now becomes um, he's so out of sight, out of mind. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't know if they plan on trading him. I think there's value in a oh. PJ Tucker for certain teams. It ain't this team. No. No, they've got to trade him. They've got to. But now you probably just got to take whatever you, you whatever you can get because they first of all a couple of years ago, you know, we 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 saw that he was wanted and they could have got a first round pick from him from Minnesota, but then they didn't they didn't do that. He was he had value here when when they were good, like you said. He doesn't have any value here, and and everybody else knows that. So I think that they're probably going to get get minimal minimal for PJ Tucker, Eric Gordon. Okay, so you had, I guess you had to play him. Uh, so be, listen, they were, they had all kinds of injuries. He's an injury prone guy. This this roster was so depleted. Uh, he he got injured as he usually does. So now he's sitting there, and you can't trade away a piece that's injured. Now, do, who do you who who's who, who's this most to blame on? Silas for playing him as much as he did. Stone for not filling out the roster enough to have enough players so that. So that you didn't have to play him all that much, or or see Daryl Morey for leaving this team in such C. a crappy situation and giving this guy eighteen plus million dollars a year. Well, you can't, oh, Stephen Silas. Don't play him. You have to play him. He's paid. He's a player. He's played to. He's paid to play. Then don't. Then don't take the money. It's definitely not Silas. It's definitely not Rafael Stone. I mean, you know, he did what he could with the money he had and what he had available to him. I mean, it's, I mean, Cousins isn't here anymore. Wood is hurt. Uh, PJ Tucker quit. So, I mean, it's definitely not on Rafael Stone. This is Daryl Morey giving a deal to an older player. I mean, it was locking them in and anchoring them into being old even longer. That's what he did. He did it with Russell Westbrook. He did it with Chris Paul, which is a domino effect with Russell and then John Wall. Now, going from turning Chris Paul into John Wall, that that's not what you'd hope for. You would not hope from a Chris Paul move turning into John Wall, who is going to get his his knee worked on and going to have surgery, and we'll see how long he's out. But, um, yeah, I just think it's a matter of Daryl continuing to give extensions to guys, and really for way longer than one would expect. That was a really puzzling thing. Daryl's moves over the last two or three years did not feel like typical Daryl Morey moves. And this one, to me, John, was – at the top of the list was yeah. the extension for Gordon. No, oh, I mean, I don't know how what you could have traded him for anyway with that contract, honestly, and no. the way that he's been playing. Uh, even if even if he was healthy, I'm not sure that what you would get from him. And now Victor Oladipo. <sighs> uh, Rafael Stone, I, I, this is one, you know, where you, you, you pick up Victor Oladipo and some other guys that don't even matter instead of getting Karis LeVert and Jared Allen. And now look at it. Uh, if you wanted an expiring contract, this is then, then you're in a good spot. You're in a pretty damn good spot.
because Victor Oladipo is probably going to walk and you got an expiring and you're going to have money. Not that you can attract anybody to come here. I don't know why you want an expiring contract when you can't attract. What you wanted to do was trade for players under contract that would stay here, that would have to stay here and be part of maybe a foundation that you could like build a off kidnapping. of. Like kidnapping. It, right, you would you, you could kidnap some guys. They'd be forced to stay here. They off would have of good to stay teams, here. and they would be kidnapped to stay in the room, the rocket room. Okay, right. um, so now Victor Oladipo looks terrible. You offered him forty five million dollars. Thank God he didn't accept it. But uh, but but what 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 could you what else can you possibly do with Victor Oladipo? You can move him or let him just roll off the cap. That's it. I. I'm so terrified that that it, it got. I'm so terrified that the Rockets made an offer of over twenty million dollars. I'm more concerned for Victor Oladipo or maybe the NBA's well-being that he believes and may get more than that on the open market. It was it was like twenty-two and a half from the Rockets, so he thinks he's going to get more than that, and maybe he will. Um, and then what I'm terrified is that the Rockets come back and say, "Let's try this again. Let's sweeten the pot. Add another year." consider yourself lucky consider yourself lucky he said no and let that contract expire victor is doing his part in the 16 game losing streak as we speak now maybe 17 fingers crossed um with with the game on tuesday so um i just want the rockets to finish in the bottom four get that lottery pick and see what happens when's the last time you had a rocket draft pick you were excited about it wasn't Capella. It definitely wasn't Morris. No one was excited about Morris. This will be the first draft pick, if they finish in the bottom four, that you'll actually be excited about. So all I can tell you is keep firing up. That, that 7 for 21 ain't going to shoot itself, Victor Oladipo. Get your shots up. 7 for 21 doesn't happen accidentally. Shoot, Victor, shoot. Shoot. 